Over the last few years, this demo has become a bit of a favourite, and it's certainly one that I can't help but love as well. All it really involves is some uh, ethanol, uh, which is just ordinary alcohol, um, which I've got here. And as you can see, it burns with this nice bluish yellow flame, but quite gently. And the reason it burns gently is that it actually has to turn into a gas before it will burn. It's not the liquid that's burning. So it can only burn as fast as the liquid evaporates. In the case of the bottle, I've slotted the ethanol around, coating all the inside surfaces, allowing it to evaporate, and created this highly combustible mixture of ethanol, vapour and air, which is ready to burn. If we ignite it and slow down the footage, you can see that at first it burns with this really lovely clean blue flame, which is a sign of what's called complete combustion. This is where there's abundant oxygen to react with the fuel, so you just get the classic combustion products of carbon dioxide and water. As the reaction progresses, the oxygen starts to get consumed, and so as well as the carbon dioxide and water, you start to produce lots of tiny carbon particles which glow yellow with the heat of the flame. There's an interesting thing that you can see at the end of the reaction, which is this sort of yellow billowing flame, and that's probably because of fresh oxygen being drawn into the bottle through the nozzle and kind of mixing around with what's left of the fuel inside. So anyway, so far, so fun. But besides the fact that this looks really cool, uh, what I think is interesting about it is that it's basically just a rocket. A rocket is a device for burning fuel and creating a force by projecting the combustion products out the back. And that's exactly what's going on here. So if this is generating some sort of force, maybe we can get it to propel something. Such as me. Hmm. That was underwhelming. So clearly the rocket isn't strong enough to have much of an effect on a mass such as mine. So let's back up a bit and see if we can determine how much thrust it is generating. And we can do that crudely on a balance like this. So that looked like it produced around 600 grams of thrust. That's about 6 newtons, which is not bad, but you can kind of see why the bottle was a bit out of its depth in trying to push on me. But the bottle on its own is around 100 times lighter than I am, so let's see how that gets on. You can really see the acceleration as the fuel burns. The burning gas creates a build-up of pressure inside the bottle that simultaneously forces the exhaust out the back and propels the bottle forward. So what we're seeing here is a really beautiful demonstration of one of the most fundamental laws in physics, the conservation of momentum. Where one object, in this case the exhaust gas, moves in the opposite direction to the other object, the bottle, balancing out the overall momentum and keeping Isaac Newton, and therefore the universe, happy. We can also try some more fuels. This is methanol, which is similar to ethanol, but has a smaller molecule. It seems to pack a bit more of a pump. And this is propanol, which is a larger molecule with more carbon in it. You can see that it burns with a lot more of the yellow flame, which you'll remember was a sign of unburnt carbon particles. Now this all looks very rudimentary, but in fact some early rockets were propelled with ethanol. The infamous V2 rockets, used by the German army in the Second World War, combined their ethanol with pure oxygen. Fully fueled, they weighed over 12 tonnes, around four of which was fuel. Now clearly with the few grams of fuel that we're using here, we're not going to be sending anything into space anytime soon. Or are we? Now that's rocket science. <laughs>